Mark, thanks very much. You've done a fantastic job. I do want to thank everyone for coming today. You put a tremendous amount of time and thought into today's discussions. As a result, there have been ideas galore generated by groups, subgroups, and in many cases, sub subgroups of people talking to each other over the coffee. To paraphrase what Alan Bollard said, if you laid all the ideas discussed today end to end, they would reach the sun and halfway back again. Mark and the chairs have just presented on 20 or so proposals that the summit has collectively identified as amongst the most promising ideas. You will know that there are at least a couple of dozen ideas, quality ones, lying behind those ones. If anyone doubted that this process would generate, uh, if anyone doubted this process would generate practical, concrete ideas, then they were sorely mistaken. That's, that's what this day has been all about. That's why we've had this summit. As Alan Bollard and John Whitehead made clear this morning, we are all in a very serious global recession, which is going to get worse before it gets better. To get through it in reasonable shape and out the other side growing strongly will take a fair bit of pragmatism, goodwill and flexibility on the part of everyone. You all have demonstrated that sort of pragmatism, goodwill and flexibility today. I want to especially thank the chairs of the work streams who have put in a huge amount of work and effort over the last few weeks and months, despite having very busy and important day jobs. And in particular, I want to thank Mark Weldon, whose boundless energy and organisational skills have made today possible. One of the key reasons for calling the summit was getting people to focus not just on what the government can do, but what different sectors different organisations and different businesses can do to maintain and generate jobs. I have therefore been delighted that discussions have not been just about government actions, but also about what business can do themselves. I have been very pleased to see what has been coming through from employers and unions about increased flexibility in workplaces, particularly around working hours. It is in everyone's interest to see jobs continuing through a flat patch with people maintaining their skills and work attachment. I was interested to hear what local government is considering. I think it's vitally important for local government to keep reviewing its expenditure, to continue to think about reducing compliance costs and red tape, and to maintain investment in infrastructure. And that way, councils will be doing their bit for enhancing growth when the recession eventually ends. I welcome the contribution of Māori to the summit, I sat for some time with the Māori Workstream and I look forward to further development of the ideas about iwi and Māori organisations and how they can use their assets, including Māori land, and enhance the skills of their people. I welcome the bank's stated commitment to New Zealand and at a more, pers at a more personal level to looking after their customers who are facing financial difficulties. Needless to say, I was delighted with ASB's decision earlier this week to set up a $1 billion fund for job creation loans. This is a great example of business stepping up to the plate. Of course, the summit has also been about what the government could do. In that regard, a lot of ideas have been proposed today. We are going to consider these over the coming weeks and respond to them. You will be able to follow their progress on the Jobs Summit website. Some of the ideas discussed today will result in real changes to government policy. I said at the outset that I want this summit to be a do-fest, not a talk-fest, and that is precisely what's going to happen. Some ideas will, begin, will become part of a longer-term process that will take some time to sort through. You may well see these ideas come to fruition at some stage in the future. Others won't make it. As you all know, uh, as you all no doubt know, the marketplace of ideas is very competitive. But I can tell you that there are some things that have been discussed today that I am particularly keen to get working on and which could start to have an impact immediately. I'm keen, I'm keen to determine just what can be done to keep up uh, and to increase levels of industry training during this recession. I've heard a number of proposals today that aim to do this 
and I want to work through these without delay. As part of this, I want to look at what the government can do to make it easier for employers to provide industry training for staff who are on reduced hours. I also want to look at whether there is anything else the government can do to remove some of the barriers to working temporarily on reduced hours within current employment law. Some interesting ideas have been discussed today, and I want to have a careful look at those. But discussion today was not just centred on people who are currently in work. It's also been concerned with people who are entering um, or, or about to enter the workforce. I think youth employment, or the converse, youth unemployment, is extremely important. We are entering a period where there will be fewer jobs for lower skilled school leavers. Those young people need to know that there are educational options available to them. They need to develop skills to make them employable and productive when the economy picks up. And they need to see that there are opportunities in front of them. I'm therefore very keen to fast track the implementation of the government's youth guarantee, has been, as has been suggested today. This will provide options for young school leavers with lower level skills to study at Polytechs, Wananga and the private training establishments. They won't have to stay at school studying Shakespeare to further their education. The skills and transition work stream also pointed out that